Netflix, Suarez. Alex, welcome back. Thank you for having me. So please talk to us about the significance of this nomination as Alex Saab, I believe, still sits in prison in Florida. Absolutely. Uh, first off, I want to mention, um, coincidentally, that my father used to be, uh, back in 2021, which was the year that I went to Venezuela as a regional election observer, uh, was a member of the Nobel Committee. Uh, so in that capacity, he was one of the ones that would vote on who would be nominated for the different Nobel Prizes. Mm. And unfortunately, in 2022, uh, where he was going to uh, consider voting for Alex Saab for that spot. Um, his Harvard email was taken down, and then his Yahoo email, which would have been used for, to verify so that he could be resubmitted into the committee, was taken down as well. So he was no longer able to be a part of that. But thankfully now, in 2023, because of the Tunisian group, uh, Alex Saab, Ambassador Alex Saab, has indeed been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And just when Julian Assange and others have been nominated for such a prize, it adds prestige and it adds attention to their case. And so I think this is great news. This is a boost for the movement uh, for all of us who've been fighting uh, to free Alex Saab. So, uh, yeah, talk about the, your, your thoughts on him being, on, on uh, Alex Saab being um, nominated for a, a Peace Prize. What do you know about it? What are they saying? Have you heard any reactions, um, et cetera? Yes, there's been a lot of reactions. Uh, it was first. Uh, the news was released in Spanish soon after I translated English and released it on my own blog, and then it was in different um, English channels as well. Um, but there's been a huge response to it, uh, especially from the uh, Free Alex Saab campaign or movement that's been in effect uh, in different parts of the world, uh, you know, not just uh, in Latin America and the United States, uh, but in Europe and especially the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, Alex Saab himself has uh, Middle East origins. Uh, and so, uh, you know, he was on his way to the Middle East, uh, uh, to Iran, when he was uh, taken illegally in Cape Verde Island, um, and then later uh, extradited by the Biden regime uh, to Miami on trumped up charges. Uh, well, there's only one remaining charge that's also false, but the other ones were dropped. But the point is, I think that a lot of people are excited about this. It's hard to ignore now the Alex Saab case. There's been a lot of defamation and slander against him, a whole campaign of character assassination uh, throughout these, these past three years. And the fact that he's been dominated for this is going to contradict a lot of those claims that they made against Alex Saab to try to justify his kidnapping and extradition uh, when he was brought here to the United States. With your starting this conversation by telling us that your father's Harvard and Yahoo accounts were taken down as it related to his role, your father's role in the Nobel pro in the Nobel process, right? What role? or impact can or does the United States have in this outcome? Um, yeah, the United States, um, you know, they have a lot of influence over international politics, um, you know, and I don't know for a fact uh, if the United States has, uh, you know, influence over a Nobel Prize. I, get, I can't give an example in history that you've, that you've probably heard about. Um, you know, they tried to blackmail Dr. King and prevent him from going to Norway and accepting the, the Nobel Prize. Uh, and that was the U.S. government. That was the, the FBI at the time. Uh, they tried to blackmail him, try to pressure him to kill himself, and try to pressure him not to go and accept the prize. So this is this is the thing the United States do, does. They do shady things to try to prevent people like Alex Saab being known in a positive light. Um, but, but despite these efforts, 